Hello and welcome to another Warcraft 3 audio commentary. Today we're going to be watching a best of three match from the Fit for Gaming Team League, and we're going to be seeing DKH.Paint spawning in as the Yellow and Dead in the lower right part of the map. This is Sea and Sand version 2 for the map. You might not have seen it again. That's one of those uh, perhaps obscure Chinese League maps that's fairly common in Chinese leagues, but. Um, not really too common uh, to see it and say fit for gaming. But anyway, it's really cool to see it here. Anyway, he's going to be going up against uh, we.gigabyte.jn, also known as Kinchin in the upper left part of the map. He's going to be spawning in as the red human, as you would expect. Of course, he is a human player. And it looks like Kinchin's going to go with a paladin first as his choice for his first hero. Interesting. And we can look down here for pain and see he's doing, uh, I believe, some sort of... Uh, I think this might actually be um, a Ted Fiends. I can't really tell. I don't think so, actually, because normally you would have your graveyard up by now. Maybe, though. Hmm. Not really sure, but it's pretty much a Ted Fiends build. If it's not exactly a Ted Fiends build, it might have been slightly different. I don't know. Anyway, it doesn't really matter. But he's definitely going with a tech and then some fiends, it looks like, of course, with that graveyard coming down right at about 150. Uh, and then up here at the top, we can see Kinchin, of course, with the Paladin, going to go ahead and use two footmen and the Paladin to go ahead and Militia creep out this Goblin Laboratory right here at the top part of the map. Uh, you should be able to do that fairly easy. This isn't too hard of a creep camp, as you can see. And, of course, with Healing Light or Holy Light, you shouldn't really lose any of your Peasants. Uh, getting that one trap right there, just going to go ahead and pick up Gloves of Haste on the Paladin. And, of course, with Paladin first builds, your goal is to creep very hard. Creep as hard as you possibly can. There is a Death Knight coming up here with a Rod of Necromancy. As you can see, it's not a very large map. Um, and just going to go ahead and see one of those Peasants going down to a cool right off the bat. I'm going to see two skeletons being summoned, and they're going to go ahead and try to get some kills on these militias. Now, this one might go down. It looks like it's going to go ahead and be living, gets holy lighted, and then we can see that Death Knight's going to be forced to run away a little bit. And we can look at the HP pools, um, the mana pools, I'm sorry. Uh, here's one thing to note. Both the Paladin and the Death Knight both spawn with 255 mana at level 1. Holy Light costs 65 mana, and it has a 6 second cast cooldown, versus 75 mana uh, and a 7 second cast cooldown on the Death Coil. So you can definitely tell that the Paladin should be able to out mana the Death Knight pretty easily. And of course you can also make a shop which can make clarity potions, so he should definitely be able to deal with that pretty pretty much as easy as you might imagine. But again, as you can see, like the map distance, the rush here is really, really small. It's uh, maybe seven or eight screens across from base to base, so it's not really a very large map. There's at least in terms of, you know, rush distance right there. But there's, of course, much more to the map. It's just, you know, kind of spread out all around it. And it's kind of, you know, the lower left and the lower right. Of course, the lower left is mostly water, but there is actually a really nice bronze dragon roost right there that you can go ahead and pick up some really nice dragon creeps at. So we might see one of those players going over for that. You can go ahead and see that Death Knight coming in here and getting a jack on Kinchin as he creeps out his natural expansion. You can go ahead and see him stealing a quill. Uh, killing one of those creeps with a coil. No, I'm sorry, not not stealing a creep. He actually was killing militia, and he's gonna go ahead and kill a second peasant right there. We're gonna see a third peasant going down that one. I couldn't tell if that was to the skeletons or to the thing, but it looks like either way, Payne is picking up quite a bit of experience on this Death Knight just from this harass up to 125. However, this paladin is getting very close to level three at 411 experience out of 500. So. It won't be too long before that Paladin is level 3, and at level 3, you can actually do quite a bit of harass to the undead player's base. Of course, we're going to see Payne going to try to eventually block that off, and there is a laboratory on this map, as we saw. Um, let's see, I don't know where it is on the bottom, but up here, there's one right there, and... It must be this. Yeah, here it is. Okay, so there it is. So both players have a laboratory very close to their base, which does mean we might see some Zeppelins, and the Zeppelins, are you generally going to use those for your Acolytes versus high-level Paladin harass, but also... If you block your base, then it's not uncommon to see a paladin using a zeppelin to get inside of your gold mine. Uh, so you're going to have to worry about both of that, so both players can benefit from the zeppelin. But of course, blocking your base is pretty much something you'd want to do regardless, though, versus paladin, even if there is the option for the zeppelin, because it's better to make them have to buy a zeppelin, uh, and you can always deal with the zeppelin much easier than you can deal with a paladin himself. 
And that's because he has a very strong divine shield. And of course, he can also pick up a uh, potion of lesser invulnerability, which will give him even longer staying power. But either way, we can see up here that this is the expansion trying to go up for Kinshin. It's going to go ahead and try to. Looks like he's running three peasants away for some reason. I'm not quite certain. There's going to be a guard tower finishing, uh, second guard tower being created as well, right there or upgrading right there and it's only a matter of time before the second one is upgraded one guard tower really doesn't do that much for stopping a harass so i'm kind of surprised that the death knight hasn't come in here and gone ahead and tried to kill that one peasant that's currently building but we do see that three more peasants are on their way the death knight is out of skeleton run charges so he's gonna go ahead and say you know what i'm not really gonna worry too much about trying to kill things i'm gonna go for the guard tower instead just gonna go ahead and force that peasant to start repairing the guard tower rather than building the town hall however it looks like two more peasants are gonna come over here and start to repair the guard tower as well and we can see a lich coming in here now with the rod of skeletons as well now it actually looks like that's a pretty good reason to go ahead and try to kill that guard tower if he could have stopped that second guard tower from going up this harass could have lasted potentially much longer than it will because uh, we're going to see of course the um, the footman coming in here and there is a paladin back into the back of this base right now for pain i'm not sure if he just walked in or what happened there but of course uh, he is in here he does have a staff of teleportation so he can get out he has gone ahead and killed it looks like two uh acolytes going for a third one right now and he did just go ahead and pop divine shield and it won't take too very long now uh before he can get enough mana for another holy light as you can see, ah, yes, indeed, he did just rock, walk right in. It looks like that is quite unfortunately for pain not blocked right there. He's going to have to chop down a tree so he can actually fit his ziggurat right there as well. Uh, and as you can see, pain just going ahead and trying to stop that paladin from running in there. We can see he's going to go ahead and use a staff of teleportation right over here to his mercenary camp with these footmen. We'll see if he's going to go ahead and creep something out. And he might try to. That's a pretty powerful creep camp at that fountain of health, though, with a centaur con level 8. And by the way, we can see up at the top, uh, all the peasants have been killed except for one, and that one is still going ahead and working on building this town hall. This town hall still hasn't gone up. It's 7 minutes and 30 seconds into the game, uh, and the town hall is going to finish any second now, but... And that is a really nice time to delay it. Uh, of course, when you see a paladin first, you really have to do that. You have to either have to deny a lot of experience for the paladin, or you really have to deny how lo how long it takes to get that town hall up. And of course, now we're going to see mass towers being built from this human player. As you can see, tier three is currently available for the undead player. As you can see, is currently also building destroyer form. He does have two slaughterhouses, so he's going for a destroyer push. Uh, so these towers are going to be very important. Pain is going to need quite a few of them, and if this tower, this destroyer push hits, you know. Know, maybe at nine minutes in the game maybe nine minutes and 30 if paint hasn't done it uh, of course properly and he, had, he couldn't really do it properly when you lose you know three or four acolytes during your tech which hurts really badly but that's life um but really just trying to go ahead and say well destroyer pushing is probably the best way to deal with a paladin uh, especially if you can delay these towers to help going up as long as you you know, Kinshin has uh, really had them delayed, then that's really good for pain. But the question is always still going to be will he be able to do enough damage with the destroyer push to actually make it worth it? And uh, that's going to be a problem because, as you can see, these towers are going up now, and you know, he's not going to have that many destroyers coming in. Maybe he'll have three, uh, potentially, he'll have a fourth destroyer when he goes to do this push. Um, he might have to wait. But if he does it at the knife, he's looking for a nine minute push, and he'll have to go right about now, and you won't have time really to get more than three. Uh, and as it looks like, he's going to go ahead and have to pop those destroyers in his own base, which is a problem uh, for him because that means you can't really do your push as well uh, because you go ahead and lost the mana from those two statues. You know, so we'll see. But he did go ahead and kill those footmen. That's really useful, though, to kill the footmen. Killing footmen is powerful for two reasons. One, because you're going to see footmen coming in here and trying to help harass this base. But two, looks like... <coughs> sorry, sorry about that. I had to sneeze. Um, yeah, two is just because... The, well, mainly just the, the one reason. But anyway, we will see that Paladin has gone ahead and popped an invo a visibility potion running into the undead player's base. Uh, of course, it is now blocked with the ziggurat that's being built, but the Paladin should be able to cancel that. Uh, you can see three towers have been canceled by pain right here at this expansion that were built very aggressively. If he had hit, if he goes for the main base right now, I think he could potentially kill those towers. But since he's going to come back to his base right now to try to keep his uh, buildings alive or his acolytes alive, he's going to certainly lose that building a ziggurat that can't uh, having to cancel it. Uh, but now he's just going to go ahead and try to keep the rest of his acolytes alive if he can. Of course, one hit plus one holy light's all it takes. And as you can see right there, uh, the holy light being very, very instant. It's not quite instant, but it's it's like you know maybe a point one second delay between the cast time or the cast animation and actually having the effect land on the acolyte. Uh, 
definitely was benefiting the the Paladin right there, because as you saw, he went for he attacked the Acolyte one time and he Holy Lighted it, and there was a Coil in midair, and of course the Coil didn't land, the Acolyte simply died. It was a little bit unfortunate. But, uh, now we're going to see Pain, he's just going to go ahead and start creeping with these destroyers, as you can see none of them have mana, and without mana they're pretty much worthless versus towers, they can't really do much. Uh, they do, of course, damage, and you know, it's additional damage because they do take extra damage from magic, but I mean, look at it, they're only doing 19 to 21 damage, so even with the additional bonus damage, it's not going to be enough to really take those down very quickly. When you have mana, you do a 25 bonus damage, uh, so that almost, you know, it doubles your attack, and that's going to be able to get you out very quickly, plus it does AoE damage, so if they're trying to repair it, you know, that plus a Nova does a really good job. Uh, but anyway, over here we can see that a Sacrificial Pit's going to be thrown down now for Pain right here in the back, of, or not in the back of his base, but at his base. And we're going to see more statues being built. Looks like the uh, Paladin having a little bit of a hard time over here. Going to go ahead and pop a Potion of Invisibility at that shop, but taking quite a bit of damage from those creeps to get that. As you can see, bringing him down to about 80 life. He's probably going to have to run to one of these healing fountains, probably this one right here, and heal up a little bit. But now we can see these destroyers. Uh, just going to go ahead and see them trying to kill these towers. We see one tower has gone down uh, and a couple of peasants right there going for a second tower now. Of course, there's only one level of masonry upgrade right now, which is pretty good for pain uh, because, you know, just the stronger, the tankier the towers are, the harder it is to kill them. But we'll see this one going down as well. Uh, and indeed, now he's going to have free reign pretty much on this peasant line. So that's really going to be able to make pretty good work for him. Uh, you can't get too close with the destroyers because, of course, they only have 450 range. And as you can see, these are 700 range towers, and this is definitely not, you know, 300 range, which would be the difference needed. So maybe this tower right here, uh, if you had your destroyers positioned back here, if you killed those two, then you could kill the peasants with your destroyers without having to worry too much about the tower damage. But, um,. As it is, we're just seeing now that Paladin coming in here. Going to go probably straight for that Death Knight, but of course there's a Potion of Greater Healing on the Death Knight, so that's not really going to be a huge issue. The Paladin has healed up right here because he was at the Heal Fountain of Health. Uh, we're going to see those nukes now coming in, those basically the Holy Light nukes. They do the same amount of damage as the level 2 coil. It's 140 damage to heroes, so it's not really a huge a big deal, but to see that Paladin just doing that. All he's doing is delaying time so he can go ahead and build more towers back into his base, uh, putting him a blacksmith out of his expansion as well, and all of that just trying to keep everything alive. Now over here at his main base, we can see he's now beginning Castle Tech. Uh, he does have Masonry currently being researched at level two, just starting it. And behind that, he's going to research improved Lumber Harvesting, as you can see, queued up. Uh, down here for the Undead player, we might see a Shade and a Worm Pit. Yes, indeed, there's the Boneyard. Uh, here's the Shade and there's the Boneyard. And that's gonna be helpful. Does he have enough wood for it? Uh, he should. Even with three goals, it's not really ideal to be going heavier with just three goals. But you can definitely do it. And over here, we can see these camp towers are now going to go ahead and get canceled for pain. Is of course, just sitting here with that uh, army. You go ahead and see a little bit of focus fire putting out onto the paladin. And paladin's going to be forced to pop divine shield. Go ahead and use a clarity. And now just right click on a statue. Uh, I'll be surprised if he doesn't go ahead and kill this one. Yeah, there you go. You can see that one happening to go down as well. And one more guard tower will die. So. And there you go, we can see some peasants potentially going down here. And of course, just nuking your peasants once that lich has a little bit more mana. There you go, 125 minutes, how much you need. He might potentially wait and keep the Nova just for the Paladin to try to keep the Paladin off of his heroes. But, you know, we'll have to see what his decision is going to be in that regard. Uh, and there's definitely one more peasant that's going to go down right there. And of course, we're going to see that Nova being used to kill a secondary peasant. One more peasant should die, it's very low, it's only got 9 life, one hit away from death. Um, just move that lich just a little bit in one hit, and you can definitely kill that. Instead, he looks like he's maybe just like microing his base or macroing over here. We can see that he is going to go ahead and make some statues. Uh, he is sitting at 61 out of 70 food, so he could potentially go for a fairly large Destro push. Uh, if he doesn't even have to have you know enough more food for um, more Destros, just more statues that he can use as batteries for uh, mana batteries for these destroyers. Because of course, uh, destroyers they go through mana over time. The mana simply degrades if you don't use it. It just um, depletes over time. You know, one at a time, very fairly fast, and of course for obsidian statues it's slightly different uh, and it, it increases over time regenerates over time if you want so um that's nice but over here we're going to see some flying machines are now being built by kinshin out of two workshops and those flying machines of course already have flak upgrade certainly uh you wouldn't use them without flak upgrade and a flak upgrade of course gives them an aoe attack and that makes them useful without it they're not really all that useful but we can go ahead and see pain's shade took a little bit of damage just from one of those flying machines and probably one of the guard towers and the flying machines of course actually reveal invisible units 
they're very good units. But uh, and as you can see, this is going to happen now. Of course, normally you would say flying machines are going to be the be all end all of air units, and that's pretty much true. Uh, but the one thing is, is that destroyers also do AOE damage if they have mana. And so if you can get a bunch of destroyers with mana, you can actually pretty much just roll right through flying machines. So we'll see if it's going to happen that way. If, there, if Kenshin gets enough flying machines, then he can absolutely take out all of these air units without a problem. But you really need a lot of flying machines, uh, probably an equal number, if you're going to deal with destroyers that have mana. Not sure if they're going to have mana or not. Uh, and if, if Pain can force the fight right now or really soon into the game, then he should have no problems actually going ahead and taking out this expansion, as you can see. Um, and these flying machines are just not sufficient in numbers right now to actually stop this. We will see Pal uh, Blood Mage second for pa Kinchin right there, as you can see. And let's see what the hero levels are like. Level 4 on the Lich and level 4 on the Death Knight. Level 3 on the Paladin, level 1 on the Blood Mage. I would definitely say Pain is pretty far ahead at this point. Uh, he could potentially still lose his whole army, which would feed a ton of experience to Kenshin's heroes. But in this case, yeah, taking this fight, this fight's not going to work out too well for Kenshin. As you can see, just not nearly enough flying machines. Uh, and you can just go ahead and see them dropping right there. You're going to go ahead and see a Holy Light on that Frostworm as he tries to keep it alive. And, uh... Well, I mean, I take it back. Um... You know, this isn't working out terribly for Kenshin. Then he's going to go ahead and kill a Frostworm. Oh, another Frostworm is coming in to reinforce this fight, though. And indeed, we're going to see these flying machines going to die right here. And indeed, they're going to back off. Only two of them have survived. And of course, we can see maybe, yep, Kenshin will go ahead and de-rally those flying machines. Keep them at this base over over here uh, while Pain was right here in between. Not really wanting to let those die to... Uh, you know, just having the reinforcements die to an army sitting there in between. Not really the greatest idea, so good move by Pain right there. We will see uh, Pain is over here just going ahead and creeping out this shop. Going to pick up level 5 on his Death Knight. That's really nice. Going to give him a 600 HP heal. We're going to see a Tome of Experience being picked up by the Lich. The Lich also really close to level 5 as well. Uh, we'll probably see that level 5 being picked up pretty quickly. Uh, and of course, in this game, we can just see that uh, this is working out really well for Pain. The Paladin first simply did not do enough damage to Pain's economy, and Pain wasn't really, uh, or I'm sorry, Kinchin wasn't really able to um, bank up as long as he wanted to. Pain had really good timing, and I'm not. The game's definitely not over, but it's definitely in Pain's advantage. So we'll see. Uh, of course, Kinchin has actually gone two blacksmith. I just now noticed, and he's probably been pumping upgrades. But he only has one attack upgrade on those flying machines, and we will see another fight going underway. But really, not too much. Just gonna see a tower die. Uh, I think we saw the frostworm die right there as well. And of course, you don't really want to fight in this tower range, but we can see lots of flying machines are still being built. Um, and the longer this game goes, of course, then the more advantage that Kenshin himself will actually be able to pick up. As you can see, that's a level 4 Paladin, uh, just getting that experience from killing these air units. Uh, we're going to go ahead and see that Blood Mage taking some heavy nuking. He does have a potion of healing. Just going to go ahead and pop that. And, of course, he was actually waiting to use that uh, for two reasons. One, he also has Holy Light. And two, because the longer the fight, you know, if you can kind of draw in pain to try to right-click on your Blood Mage rather than the Flying Machines, then the Flying Machines can do a lot of damage to your air units. And as you can see, this is actually turning out a little bad for Pain as he's trying to run away. Uh, he needs to keep these destroyers alive, uh, but it looks like he might go ahead and lose a lot of them right here because there's a lot of flying machines chasing him down. You can't really stop these flying machines from chasing you either. Um, as you can see, yeah, right here, indeed, all of these destroyers are going to go down, and there's really nothing Pain could have done about that, and now the flying machines are going to run away, and indeed, there you have it. Flying machines are very, very fast units, as you can see, I and mean, it's very fast, it says right there, um, but with Unholy Aura Level 2, you can actually outrun, well, not really outrun them, but you can kind of run at the same speed as them with destroyers, but it's, it's you can't really go anywhere, you know, you, your base isn't going to just, you know, one Nerubian Tower is not going to stop that many of those guys right there, and we can see level 3 now has been picked up by the Blood Mage, about to level 5 on that Paladin as well, and Kinchin, of course, or, yeah, just playing it safe, playing it very carefully, and there you go, I mean, yeah, Kinchin's now taking the advantage of the game, and we see there are 5 just, uh, statues just sitting right there, but that's not really going to do enough. Uh, we will go ahead and see these a couple of things being unsummoned. Uh, fiends are currently being produced by Pain at this point. He definitely has to transition because uh, you, one, Kenshin has taken air superiority and you can't get it back versus flying machines. Not without a panda. You need something that can actually sit there and nuke those things down in mass and just keep on working it. But as you can see... Um, it's just going to be a little bit of a matter of time. Uh, we're going to see 
Kinchin is now just sitting over here and going to uh, lose a peasant that was mining. You can see him running all of these units into his base. We'll go ahead and see that Kinchin is at 66 food. Uh, Yash, or well, not Yash, but uh, Pain just down to, you know, maybe 10, 13 food right there. And then, you know, 3 food for those statues. So not a lot. We can see him at... Uh, 43 food so definitely quite outnumbered these flying machines currently don't have the bomb attack upgrade so they can't actually go ahead and hit you air ground units just yet but if we look we can probably see that it's being researched indeed it is uh and so it's just a matter of time before kinchin's army is going to actually be able to push into this base um actually gonna see the lich dying i'm surprised okay well there he goes he died um the paladin just nuking the crap out of him and you can see that Kinshin just gonna go ahead and have this paladin get more mana from that blood mage and that's just gonna be a lot of mana and that's gonna be a lot of nuking and here come those flying machines and of course with flying machines you generally just go for the statues because why not uh, you can kill them fairly quickly they do have just basic armor it's not a lot just four armor um, and down they go and this fight uh, you might see the blood mage die right here nope it's gonna get holy lighted and that Bat Death Knight is out of mana. He does have a Yank of Reincarnation. Would have been nice to see that perhaps on the Lich, but oh well. I'm going to see a Dreadlord coming out as Pain's third hero. But I mean, as you look at it, unfortunately for Pain, this just doesn't look good. As you can see, there's a lot of air units, there's a lot of human units right here, knights and flying machines and a high level paladin. Uh, Payne's actually going to go ahead and call a good game. And there you have it. That's game one of the best of three for the Fit for Gaming Team League match. It was on C and Sand. Very interesting map. Honestly, I thought Payne had that game. And I think he could have won the game. I think he really could have won the game uh, when, he, when he kind of was like at that expansion. There was only a couple of towers left. And he was dealing with those flying machines, and I think he, he would have lost a lot to kill those towers, but he would have killed those towers, and he could have pretty much stopped all mining at that expansion. I think it would have been worth the loss, but hey, that's game one. If you'd like to check out game two, I'll see you there. Just click right up here, and we'll see you there.